What do we have here? A little Saturday night edition of Lulz. This isn't one of our crazy drunken MMA streams, but maybe we'll get close. Tonight, we are drafting a big dog team on underdog, $250. We got how much up top? $100,000 up top. You guys can join us in this room should you dare to compete against Brian and I tonight on Lulz. Let's do it. I, does he think... I it's think he thinks go. this he thinks this is a go. Vegas Dave thinks this is a go. Hot naked girls doing yoga. What? Why don't you just win like a man? Random.org. <laughs> Type in one for yes, two for no, and let the DFS guys pick for you. And I'm absolutely begging you not to do bus. <laughs> Please. Please don't do bus. GM, GM, Henry Mudo's excited. GMs, I guess GNs. Good night. Chris is here. Brian is here. How are you doing tonight, Brian? Pretty good. Can, how can can you hear me? Because I was kind of glitching there. I'm telling you, Streamyard. Every time I start with Streamyard, start of the show, it, glitches. Uh, you sound fine to me. Okay. Yeah. You don't see. You don't think. I don't think you're glitching. I think you're good to go. All right. Good to go. Yeah. Thank you guys for uh, for joining us tonight. You know, obviously we would normally roll on Wednesday afternoons. I've had a very hectic schedule. Uh, Brian was nice enough to uh, to do a little uh, special edition tonight, and I'm, I'm feeling good about it. We're gonna we're gonna hop in a big dog draft here in a second, Brian. Uh, what's new with you this past week and a half or so since we last talked? Not much. I've been trying to golf, but with uh, recovering from a shoulder injury, it's not pretty, Pete. Not especially off the tee, but um, it doesn't hurt that much. So I'm um, I'm just I'm just pushing through it. Um, the uh, and we got UFC tonight. This, there was a pretty good fight here. We just uh, is it Usman tonight? Usman tonight, yeah. Nice. Did you? Uh, are you still blasting off in those MMA DFS streets? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah. Um, I had the second fight was pretty high scoring. I had like 0% of these guys. So I'm oh, like, oh, God. Shit. Yeah. It kills um, it. You guys are disgusting. I thought I was I was going to register and thought I would have to do a little heavy lifting here to promote this, fill a 250. But apparently you guys all have loaded underdog balances and zero Saturday night plans because we are already off to the races here, Brian. Yeah. That was my joke. Making fun of myself. Pete's, Pete's like, can you do Saturday night at... 10 Eastern. I'm like, let me check my schedule, Pete. <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, 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 I think now what happened too is like, I've now done drafts every night uh, since Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, ship chasing Saturday. So now I think I just have this Pavlovian response to looking at my calendar and being like, there's not a draft to stream tonight. I, I gotta, I gotta do one. <laughs> oh man. Best ball season. Best ball season, uh, you know, when I did the one the other night with Rob, or that was last night, there was, I believe it was even more badge brigade heavy than this one. I do see some familiar phrases. Of course, Chris G rocking the 101 here, GME holder. I recognize some ship chasing guys in here. So we're going to have to battle, battle is, with the Sharks tonight. I was going to, isn't it pretty good though for a 250? We got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, I think no it's badges. Good. I think it's pretty good for a 250, yeah. Yeah, for a 250 that you that you stream too, because usually you get some guys from your show going too. So, yeah, and uh, I know it's funny. Chris, Chris is already max BBM, so it, you know he's he, he these are the only contests he could even get in right now. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna try to plow through at the end of the right before the season starts. You got is that your goal? Are you, are you think you're gonna get to get to max there? Um. If I can do some sort of automation thing, mm -hmm. but uh, if I can't, then I won't. Man, I won't be able to max. Then you'll, you'll wave the white flag here. Yeah, I'll just do as many as I can, but without going, without just I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to like multi-table five. Yeah, that you you should stream that. Or can I can I watch you multi-table five? <laughs> <laughs> be a shit show trying to talk to. Uh, oh, I don't know how you do it, man. Jesus. Well, I haven't. I've only been doing one. I, I mean, I'm a disaster even when I add two. Uh, I was hoping Devonte Adams falls there. Um, this is one of those where I worry about these rooms just going so extremely wide receiver heavy that I do think I want to bite the bullet and take okay. CD Lamb here so we don't get boxed out. Yeah, that's fine. And um, would you go Kelsey if you didn't do CD there? I think so. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, ten point six percent. That's kind of kind of low on uh, uh, on Kelsey. Yeah, well, I mean, compared to the the rest of you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you have the target exposures up as the first one. Yeah, blue is target exposures, and then red is my BBM three exposures. Obviously, this is big dog. This is uh, my first oh. big dog on my account. Yeah, yeah. So that's target for BBM three, but it should yeah. be that that different. I mean, I still like I still like being able to see it there, and, and Kelsey does go off the board. It, he's been in these rooms that are really wide receiver heavy. I it the tight ends I like still tend to not go as crazy high. So I'm more inclined to, uh, so I really like Saquon a lot at this price. The question is, are we going to get buried if we get too far behind? Um, but I, I'm pretty into Saquon here. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And, and like, you, it's not like you need to balance any exposures in the big dog, right? I mean, exactly. I guess the only exposure is if you, if you were leveraging your BBM three portfolio and, and trying to i mean you to could kind of you could do that i've been um every, every 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 mma slate i'm always like okay how can i minimize my risk in the sports book like because i have 80 some percent of usman tonight and zero yeah. percent of edwards who he's fighting and it's like i'm like i'm sure there's some sort of like if i could add that into my sim somehow like the yeah. sport yeah, like okay, let's say we bet X on the sim. Here's how much I'm betting overall. Could I figure out, you know, get away to where I like have no risk at all? I'm just free rolling. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, I, you can't like because you could lose all your bets and not win DFS. But right, and the, there's vig, you know, so it, it's probably not possible. But it's a fun a fun math problem though to try to think through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, balancing your a portfolio across multiple GPPs is definitely something you should at least consider. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, my thought process here in this draft too, and I do really think, you know, Saquon has top five upside at the position. And, you know, I have a lot of Debo Samuel exposure in BBM three. He's normally would be the guy if I, I felt like this room would be crazy where I'd want to take him there. But the other thing I'm always thinking about is like, all right, if I take Debo there, you know, the other teams earlier in the room, Cup, Jefferson, Chase, Diggs, Adams, they have better wide receivers than me, and I'm pushing down better running backs to them as well and having almost a watered-down version of their teams where I at least feel like I can combat their higher-powered starts by getting a running back that I think has that top five upside there. So right. you do see A.J. Brown here go, and, you know, it doesn't seem as crazy – wide receiver heavy as some of my like bbm3 morning streams well there was a run on rbs there huh like yeah yeah and i should mention too so you know last year i believe the big dog uh on underdog was 20 rounds it is 18 rounds this year the advancement groups are obviously different than bbm3 it's a much smaller uh tournament here we have let's see it'll be 2300 and four entrants in this one and so round one obviously a 12 person group round two is a six person group pretty small there round three eight person group and then round four is is pretty big all things considered a 64 person group so 12 6 8 and then up to 64 for that that week 17. i remember talking about this with with davis last year so it looked like 69 max entry right mm -hmm. times 250 that's seventeen thousand two hundred fifty to mm -hmm. win a hundred grand right like i mean yeah. you could take second too but like there's a big drop off uh i mean obviously if you have a big edge you should you st st should still max enter but like that seems like too too much you know what i mean like even 10 grand is 10 to 1. yeah are you gonna win this every you know every 10 years um probably not <laughs> maybe i don't know probably not i don't know i mean and and you're getting way way worse than that, you know, whatever. Yeah, seventeen is. Um, like I, I don't know. I would say like ten. And I would trees. I would and I would be kind of shocked if anyone was even close to max entering, even close to half entering this thing. I, I mean, I, I would guess the the highest is twenty five thirty. If any of you whales in the chat are doing more than that, please please speak up. But uh, I would be pretty surprised. I mean, it, it wouldn't shock me, honestly. There's so many. 
<laughs> Dgens. So I haven't, you know, Keenan Allen isn't my favorite uh, selection. Uh-huh. He was going a lot earlier in the third round, earlier in draft season. Obviously, the sentiment is shared by other like-minded drafters, but I have no problem taking Keenan here. You know, five picks after ADP in a wide receiver heavy room. I'm not. I'm not complaining about it. Yeah. Um, the Keenan thing with you guys that I've thought about is then you got you guys don't seem to like the the a bear stacks because they're so easy to get and common is that uh, i mean i know that's what justin justin has zero percent a bear i uh, herbert is, obviously. Uh, yeah i was like is this is this a french bit because i do like it i, I do like just just say it's a bit and we'll all believe you it, it it's my own little bit yeah okay i actually heard uh bears running back khalil uh a bear got carted off the field today and uh oh, in no. practice yeah, oh, didn't wow. like this, to see that. Bummer for those people of zero percent David Montgomery, huh? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> goodness. I mean, no. Now it just means it's trust in Ebner season. Oh, is um, that that the third string? <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. I am. Uh, I kind of think Gabe Davis is undervalued. Um, I, I, I really, as you can tell, I never take Connor and Zeke. I'm even below the uh, the target exposures here. Um, yeah. I think Gabe Davis's ADP is going to be rising in the next couple I would of days. Take, I'd take a running back. So I'm sorry, a wide receiver. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, if you got me at the last second to take <laughs> I James Connor, back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was fine with any of those those two. Even even McL- uh, McLaurin, I think. Um, yeah, man, you only got two percent of him. Yeah, he's been uh, or yeah, three and a half percent. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are all so what that target exposure says is you guys are all down on him. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a combination of you know bad quarterback play, uh, obviously, and then McLaurin started his career so hot, everyone was so excited about him, and then he's been a little bit disappointing in the past year, and then they draft Jahan Dotson in the first round, who's pretty good. And I think that's a concern for his target volume there, having a really good rookie joining him. So, I mean, when you think about the spread on their ADPs, you know, McLaurin going in the 40s and Jahan Dotson is going at what? Pick 140. It's just like, I'm not convinced that that McLaurin's going to outscore Dotson. And so with that kind of spread, I'd just much rather play it through through the other guy. Um. But I, I think there's certainly, I mean, he's a good player. There's certainly paths to where that burns me. I was disappointed. I believe uh, they drafted a pretty exciting rookie quarterback, Sam Howell. And uh, I believe he's out for the season. I saw someone in the chat. Let me know if I read that uh, correctly. Who's their but quarterback now, Wentz? It's Wentz, yeah. The Commanders is the worst yeah. team name. They should have kept football team. That was actually kind of cool. Mm. I know. The Washington football team, it felt like it felt, you know how when there's the uh like the the Jerry Seinfeld norm core type thing came back and everyone in Brooklyn was wearing, you know, a stonewashed jeans and white new balances. That's what the Washington football team name felt like. It felt like a very hipster norm core vibe. It, it felt very yeah. cool for the NFL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they, of course they totally lucked into it and then didn't yeah. even realize it. Yeah. Oh, my bad, Chris. I'm messing up. I, I mixed up my uh, my rookie quarterbacks. Uh, I meant uh, Matt Corral on the uh, the Panthers. That's my bad. Yeah, and everyone's talking about this, the Herbert news. It, it was really weird because I, I saw some of you guys in the Ship Chasing Discord referencing it, and then I was searching on Twitter to see if there was any more reporting on it, and there was like two tweets – like across the entire landscape and it said he had been carted off at practice and there were no further details. Um, Hmm. so yeah, if you are, uh, if you are drafting right now, pump the brakes on Khalil. I mean, to non like D gens, like that is really not news, right? To like (laughs) 99.99% of the world, Mm -hmm. the backup running back for the Chicago bears. I know. And for us, it's like, Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Does that does that do anything for you for Montgomery? Um, it does. Yeah, yeah. If Herbert's out for, the, I mean, I her, I thought Herbert was a legit threat 
to David Montgomery in the way that they had even been using them in the, the preseason game, like indicated that he was um, not really going to be on tap for maybe the workload he had gotten previously. So yeah, I think it makes Montgomery a, a much safer selection. You're talking I mean, about how, a, a bear, right? Yeah. So I was slightly over on a bear. He was one of my, it's always, it's crazy how smoothed out my stuff is. Cause I, I, every time I go and think I have like a stand on a guy, I, it's always, it's always less than I think I like, if I always think I have like, Oh, I thought I had 15% Herbert and it's 9.7, but are you any slow drafts? Just um, like puppies. I haven't done a single or at least in like a couple months, BBM mm. three slow drafts. Um, so I was going to say that can mess with your exposures. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't update those till it's over. Right. Um, oh, man, that Montgomery staring you right in the face with an injured a bear. I know, but look, I mean, if we're doing a running back, I mean, Cam makers, maybe Darnell Mooney's the benefit, you know, they just go more pass heavy. Um, yeah, that makes sense for some reason. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, I, yeah. Can you imagine me getting my, <laughs> my exposure here? If he's sitting there too, it would be pretty funny. Um, I kind of like, I think acres or Metcalf, um, acres gets that week 17 correlation with Keenan. I just don't know how much we need to prioritize that in a 64 man field. Do you have any thoughts? Acres Metcalf? Metcalf. I would Let's go. Do it. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. I mean, he, it, it's, he's still a, a, you know, a, a, a beast like of a man. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> We were we did our main event draft last night. We had a decision Metcalf versus Juju. We took Juju, but I think it's an entirely different conversation in managed, right? Where it's like we know Juju's going to be attached to Patrick Mahomes every week. That's going to feel pretty good slotting him in. We mm -hmm. know Metcalf, like you said, he's going to have those those massive weeks, but he's also yeah. going to have some weeks where he puts up two points. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but for us, that's that's kind of what fun. we want here. Yep. We want you know, two points. Oh my god, he's gonna fall right back, sit in your lap. Are you gonna make it's me a, take Montgomery? I, I, I'll, I, I'll t the only problem with taking Montgomery here is that he he's now sliding in drafts and will slide in this big dog room, but he won't. He won't. I, I man, Mooney at pick sixty three here would be nice too. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Take take whoever thinks better, but like it technically, it wouldn't affect your BBM three exposure because you wouldn't have him in there still. I, I know. I'll tell you what I, you can see here. I'm slightly below target on Mooney because mm -hmm. he never slides in BBM three. It's kind of shocking to me that he slides to the sixth here uh, in this room. So I'm, I'm going to take my stab at Mooney. All right. And we got just a true anchor RB build here. A, a lot of times I am grabbing the elite quarterback in this range. You know, Kyler hurts yeah. Lance all on the board. I mm -hmm. didn't have any stack pairings. Um, and now I have some other later stack options with Dak with Lamb, Fields with Mooney. So with these three guys on the board, I didn't feel the need to to force the elite QB there. Yeah, Justin. Um, see, now I don't want to say anything because I don't want someone to take take who I'm thinking of. This is an interesting move by Joe here, double tapping elite qbs unstacked you do not see this often mahomes no stack yeah. hurts no stack no badge pete no badge no stack what's the difference between a red badge and a black badge i think red is the like 1000 draft threshold and then the white is i think the 500 there's other i think there's a few other qualifiers in there but it's it goes white then red so you're big time yes uh, Uncle Andy, you are on the right show for this question. We are using Brick's tool, the Brick Draft Caddy. You can find it at brick75.com. We've done some shows on it. We have a little tutorial link down in the show notes below. It's an overlay here for your underdog drafts, lots of different customizable options. The stuff we have up here, of course, target exposures, which includes Justin Herzig, my exposures, Davis's, Pat Cranes. Anyone else that I'm missing in that basket? No, that's everyone, I think. Um, and I, re I regress it to the main, too. So, Yep. 
but yeah, Andy, so when you're on it, so it's a, it's a Chrome extension. And what you can do is you go over, once you have the extension, you go over to your exposures and you can select, you know, best ball mania. You can select all your tournaments. I, I've been doing best ball mania three. So I apply it in the same way. If you're looking at it on underdog and then you just hit this grab exposures here and you can't see it, but I got a pop-up that says auto exposures captured. And now I head back to my draft and it will be there for me in my drafts. And um, that works for any sport too. And you, you don't even have to filter it if you do want all of your exposures for all your drafts. You can do, so you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Andrew said, me calling the double quarterback unstacked move interesting is generous. I am feeling generous tonight. You know, some nights I feel like an asshole and feel like making fun of people. And, and some nights I'm feeling charitable. I'm feeling charitable tonight, Andrew. <laughs> uh it no, also, Steven. It it unfortunately doesn't work on the phone, desktop uh, only. No, it's hard enough doing desktop, man. Yeah. The um <laughs> it, it works it works on Mozilla too. <laughs> if, if people yeah. like using that one too. Uh David Montgomery did not make it back despite Phil promising me that he would. Yeah, 82 would be nice. Even you would have to take them there, right? Eh? Yeah. I like this room. I, I was I was a little gun shy at the top, and now I think this is actually a pretty normal room. Yeah, I thought I thought six uh guys with um no what is that called? Badge. Yeah. Pretty good for a two fifty. Yeah, shit. I was really hoping Schultz would fall. It would have been fun to set up the uh the Dallas double stack with Lamb. I'm inclined to keep ripping wide receivers here. I mean, Kadarius, Tony, we have Saquon. That would also set us up for a little Daniel Jones and a big bet yeah. Yeah. on the Giants. Go for it. And then, you know, with this kind of construction, you know, we're probably only one more wide receiver total. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And depending on what we do at tight end or quarterback. You might need definitely three tight ends at this point. Yeah, we could do a punt, a punt tight end here. I do think uh what's what's Dingus gonna do here? I love just saying that. What is Dingus going to do? <laughs> what is this Dingus here? gonna fucking what's do? Ding, what's this fucking Dingus gonna do? Um now we have some green on the board, but I do think we get our stack here with yes. Lamb and Dak. That's who I didn't want to mention. I was gonna say we gotta just lock it in. We gotta I, lock it in. I don't know if that's like bad strategy, but I usually I lock that shit in if I can, like even if it's five early or 10 early. For sure. I, I think I'm, I'm that way as well. You know, sometimes I, I've mentioned people always ask me about the double elite quarterback thing, which I'm not, you know, completely opposed to, but I like getting a value on the second one. So maybe if we had, you know, grabbed a stack early, I wouldn't, I'd be like, let's just see if Dak comes back. But in this scenario where we don't have a quarterback yet and Dak is still kind of on that fringe elite tier, I definitely want to lock yeah. him up there. Man, Schultz stack would have been perfect right there. Yeah. Um, Qbert rules just asking more of a, a vac in a vacuum correlation question. I know we love stacking, but I see occasionally a GPP winner has very little stacking, and they just hit all the one offs and get close to totally optimal. Why can't that happen in best ball? It absolutely it, can it, happen. It, it can happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That the argument isn't that one offs in DFS or best ball can't win. It's just what gives us a slightly better chance of winning and then adding up all those slightly best strategies. And then hopefully we have an edge over rake. Uh, we, we might never win. Like it's very likely that, I mean, I'm a perfect example. I've never won the Millie maker in DFS and I've played every single one for, I don't even know how long at this point, eight years, nine. Um, now I could just suck balls, but I, I think I'm a pretty good and I, I've never won it. So. And it's the I, same thing. We, we always say in DFS, right. And you go look at those Millie maker lineups, even those winning Millie maker lineups generally have like a skinny stack at the very least, but then it does look like someone was just randomly throwing darts, you know, picking, picking players. And so you can win a nine leg parlay, but it, it is more akin to playing the lotto. There really is not a lot yeah. of skill in it at that point. 
Yeah, it's just bias. Like it's real bad, you know, research, stats research to go see the winner and then to do something from that. Well, even 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 like pro players, like a lot of times like they enter they fuck up or they enter like last minute and they didn't get a time to do their full process. And you might be deducing something that they don't even do. I see that sometimes on streams. And I think too, and I, I I make this distinction a lot because I feel like it get it gets lost. There's a difference between a single game or even single play correlation and correlation across the entire season. And in best ball specifically, and I think to Kubert's thing, I think that holds up more on a single game standpoint where you can see that. But in best ball, like there are going to be the better offenses and the sleeper teams that emerge. And yeah. they are going to continually outproduce their draft position over the course of the season as a cohort. And we saw it last year with the Bengals massively smashing expectations. So, you know, you want to be making bets on those teams. And how do you do that? Well, you could you can make bets on a single team and not trying to hit the one player on each team. That's a lot harder to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the season long correlation has got to be huge. Like you got like especially if you double stack or st stack both quarterbacks that you have or three quarterbacks even, like you have all these extra shots at you know just a big lucky correlated game each you know six how many times <laughs> uh, right. twelve how many weeks is the regular season? Yeah, uh, seventeen. No, I mean for or eighteen for this for um oh for this yeah fourteen fourteen. There you go. Um, so speaking of like team correlation bets, you know, Gibson's falling like a rock. Hunt's kind of interesting. He is sliding here, but I'm inclined to take the younger guy, James Cook. We already grabbed Gabe Davis on the Bills and yeah. kind of round out that that bet on an offense that I think is obviously going to score a, a ton of points here. Walker's hurting. Yep. Um, I mean, this is really kind of fallen to us, isn't it? Like, it has a lot of running backs here and we need running backs. I think we're going to be good on running backs. I feel fine about our quarterback options. I think we might end up and I don't do a lot of these, but we might end up with like a, a three tight end build. Yeah. You Which know, with fine. the Albert o, o stuff today, was that today or yesterday, whatever, um, where he's playing yeah. in the fourth quarter and now people don't think if he's, he's going to be the starter. Mm -hmm. three tight ends make some sense when you got all these these like uh kind of more darty tight end options it's not like you're guaranteed that to have that backup play when you're starting you know you're good tight end we don't even have a good tight end on this team but is you know like three to make some sense for tight end even though it's a, a weak position to spend one of your 18 on yeah this might end up being a, a somewhat gross spot here i I don't I mean, even, Zach, what about you? Don't you don't like it? Do you? I, I'm okay. I'm okay doing Zach Ertz. He's not my favorite player. It does open us up to where I don't think we necessarily have to do. The other thing I'll say, I don't think Jalen Tolbert makes it back to us. And if we just want to be done with do our it, dad, do it, double do stack, it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's a little rich. I, yeah. I have not been chasing up this Tolbert stuff, but just kind of thinking through our construction here. And I do yeah. still want to, because Dak doesn't rush a ton, I do want to double stack him. Um, I know people like their flyers deep, Noah Brown and uh, whoever else, but six picks ahead of ADP. I can, I guess I can stomach that. Walker's hurting. Gibson's the special teams player now. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, that's you're so, I'm actually impressed with your not like you knowing <laughs> Walker's hurting. How do you know that? I'm, that's, <laughs> I, I've been I've been listening to the e ETR pods. Okay. Um, Old Brian then, like, would have had no fucking shows. clue. <laughs> Mainly Twitter. Yeah. You can't you can't avoid it. Everyone that's all people talk about. Is yeah. NFL. Let's take a little peek at the uh, UFC here, Pete. What happened? Yeah. How are we doing? I mean, I'm probably out of it, but okay. God damn it. I, that's another bad one. <laughs> yeah. Um, the biggest favorite uh, knocked the guy out in the first round. Oh, but he didn't get the bonus by five seconds, so I guess there's that. There you go. 
Um, I agree with you. Best ball moderate. He says the ADP does not matter as much in a late season tourney. I, I don't care about taking him ahead of ADP. I mainly mean that his ADP in general, I think is very rich um, just for what level of prospect he is. And I get why we have as a community have pushed him up to there, but it's more just skittish about his ADP in general, not because I took him uh, ahead of his ADP, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So you think he's more like 130 range or something. So right. you're like really reaching. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Cuber taught, you know, continuing the stack stuff, um, i.e., a naked elite QB, wouldn't that be a little rare, unique? I do think you're onto something in that, and that's why I brought up the point with Dak, and this happens with Burrow and Brady, these guys that aren't gonna rush. Like if they smash, if they have a 30 point game, it's gonna be because they throw four plus touchdowns. And if they throw four plus touchdowns, a double stack is is going to be in play with Lamar, with Hertz, with Lance. I mean, those guys can legit run for a hundred yards in a game and put up 30 points and maybe only have one receiver or pass catcher that has a big game. So I do think there's a lot more merit. And I've heard Sean talk about this, Sean Siegel, really sharp mind over at Rotoviz. And he talks about how sometimes he likes getting those um, rushing quarterbacks, not because of the rushing points per se, but because it gives him more flexibility and not feeling like he has to force those double stacks in the ways where with Dak, I'm like, how does Dak win us this tournament without having, you know, Tolbert and Lamb going off during the playoffs a lot? Yeah. I, I will say, I you know, obviously all that makes sense, but just a little cautionary thing mm -hmm. from what I'm seeing with a lot of this unique stuff in best ball kind of reminds me of ownership plays in DFS where you could kind of just like showdown, you could kind of justify anything by saying, yeah. well, no one's going to have it, <laughs> you know, that kind of like, yeah, right. What if you it's unique? That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but you can't, I mean, like I keep saying, and I'm, obviously not going to do it this year but like there's you got to quantify this stuff somehow yeah. i say do it through sims but like you could also just look at the data and try to like figure it out from there but like there's answers to it to this you know it's like okay yeah uniqueness matters probably right we could all safely yeah. assume that but how much does it matter and then like when are you making a mistake for like the justin a bear stacks that you know um herzig is like trying to fade because he thinks it's in so many combinations because it's so easy to pick up. Like right. when does that trade off occur? Like, yeah, you're just, you're just guessing, right? This is what I always say. Pull that trigger on Gallup. God damn it. No, <laughs> I know I, I'm sweating. Uh, if, if Joe adds a third QB here, I, I think uh fields is a pretty nice pick for us. Uh, I, uh, when I see that highlight, I just have to pick him. Wait, why is Hardman highlighted? I don't know. It's a, it's a bug here. Uh, I think fields is really nice for us. I was okay. Like if we got Daniel Jones, but because we're kind of pushing quarterback a little bit and we know we're going to probably need to get to three tight ends. I love that we can be done at quarterback with, with Dak and fields. Uh, you know, I, I want some fields on, on any team I, mean, I have, you know, I'm you guys, a huge Bears fan. If you guys, I wish I could show you these DMS before the show, Brian's like, yeah, man, let's draft a big dog. And I was like, do you want to just like draft the best players and stuff? And he's like, dude, can we just get a few bears, man? Like, the bears, <laughs> the bears. And he's like sending me all these, you know, Mike Ditka videos. I mean, it's, it was a lot, but I was like, all right, Brian, we can grab some bears for you. <laughs> I, I like the, the a bear. bear. <laughs> <laughs> Brian likes a bears and a bears. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh the um i like the way this is shaping up for us yeah we still got I some good too. options right here too yep we do speaking of alberto sink can't like take him now right yeah i saw uh pat quote retweeting something bearish about alberto and say you hate to see that on your honeymoon <laughs> davis, <laughs> davis is tilting davis <laughs> logs in to see all this uh did, did, did someone, someone just did take, someone take did some yeah someone took gallop and did someone take commit did i did i miss commit going is that guy is that fucking dingus actually watching this stream and just fucking sniping us on purpose yeah let's um let's get some more running backs yeah um, e let's either do, one let's do spiller okay we got now we kind of have our our twinning bets here. You know we have uh, Saquon and Tony. We have our Cook and Gabe Davis and our Spiller and Keenan. So making bets on on these offenses here. 
Um, did, where did where did Komet go? Did when did Komet gets get picked? I miss him. Uh, right there at 16, uh, 10th round. Holy cow. All right, 118. Ace Man. Ace Man with a crazy draft here. Ace Man's, oh man, Ace Man. Mike Evans, Robert Woods, and Russell Gage through 12 or 11. Huh. Um, Gray Kid, is Tilt Space coming back this year? Yes. We should have some information on that soon been talking with uh leone and holka about that so yes we will uh we'll, we'll have an announcement on that soon hopefully are you gonna have the same sponsor uh tbd tbd mm -hmm. we gotta figure it out we gotta okay. figure it out but i do think i can say i think we are going to be doing it on playback where people can I've, mm -hmm. I've sent you that site and we've talked about it where people can, we'll all be watching red zone. The same. Oh yeah. Concurrently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you done, have you done one of those? Yeah. Like we did recently, one. recently. I mean, I know you Not did that. Recently. One. No. Well, so what was your experience when you did the, the first one? I, re I really enjoyed it. Um, it was super fun. And the thing about it is, it's like, so you lot basically for people who don't know. So there's this site called uh, get playback. And what you do is it's like a stream yard room or whatever, Brian and I talking, except the screen share isn't anything we have control of. It's we pick a channel to watch. So obviously we couldn't do this UFC fight because it's pay-per-view. I think there's some stuff there, but like, let's say it was a main um, a basketball game, hockey, literally anything on TV. We could do fucking real housewives of orange County. Um, and that's on the screen. And then you get to choose your audio levels for Brian and I's mix, the hosts and the broadcast mix. So you can pick, you know, that level. And then you log in with your cable provider. And so now we're all watching the same thing in real time. So we can like legit sweat it. And then if you don't have the cable login, well, you can still just watch our feed, you know, in the same way you would watch it as like a YouTube mm. video. So it's almost just mm. like, upside but it allows us you know always it's say with our ufc stuff right where we're like oh what time are you at what right. time stamp all this so i'm pretty excited for for what that'll do for the show yeah next one we do we definitely gotta do it that way i know we'll have to see yeah the next time there's like a ufc card where it's not pay right review mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a bear no a bear is carted off the field Cubert mm. likes three tight end builds. Well, I got news for you, buddy. We're headed toward one tonight. Zero QB or zero <laughs> Q, uh, tight end build. Zero tight end. And I do. I was. I was gonna. I was gonna pound the table for Pacheco there. Yeah, another no, guy. I would, I would have been fine with that. Yeah, especially this early on in this tournament. Not a lot of people who have him at. I doubt anyone has him at a cheap price. I forget when exactly this came out, but I don't think there's any like 18th round Pacheco's in this. Well, Herbert would normally be the, I mean, can someone give me a report on Herbert? There's no way we could take him here after <laughs> no, he got carted no, off. I'll take him. Do you just um, want to get the tight end? I think I would go, go Henry. I've been pretty spooked about the Kasiki stuff, all this blocking, losing a ton of snaps. Um, Henry, I still really like his kind of okay. red zone role. Let's get, let's grab ourselves a tight end here to kick off this three tight end build. So we basically need running backs tight end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're done at wide receiver and quarterback. Yep. You, I think we maybe have one luxury pick if we wanted to tack on like a Bears wide receiver with fields for a double stack. Yeah. What about Daniel Jones? To go a three QB build? Yeah. I think we could. I, I'm I'm definitely more open to it in this smaller smaller field. So that would put, if we did do three tight end, three QB, seven wide receiver, thirteen. That would be a five running back build. Saquon, Anchor, Cook, Spiller, two late RBs. I think that's viable. Okay, I, I I think maybe we need six RBs on this team, but it feels kind of like a six, depending on yeah. how much we're. It all depends to me on if we're grabbing more tight ends here, or like it. I guess we are in like a dead zone right now for running backs. Not that dead zone, guys. An ADP dead zone. 
I actually like a lot of these tight ends still left. A bear. Ever Everett has been my guy. You can tell here 15%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and we've already made a pretty big bet on the Chargers. I kind of like it. Okay. I think We're we could do the joke. Yeah. Justin Sticks. We could do Higby if we wanted a little, but I mean Everett's just so much more fun of a pick. At Google. Khalil yeah. here. Jay Williams is probably fine. TikTok. I, I'm a little biased against him, but he's fine. What about a Tristan Ebner 18th round pick? Shh, don't reveal all my secrets. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy, I believe Brian has been tagged about this. Uh, did he see his Finnish prime minister pretend girlfriend? Wow. Toss in the pretend. Jeez. Got in trouble again. What, what was she doing out partying? Yeah. Imaginary, not pretend. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, she was out. She was out partying. Yeah. And, uh, also we broke up too. So mm. I'm pretty sure that's what's the center on this downward spiral sad you know i feel for the people of finland you know but what are you gonna yeah. do it and you know what kind of sucks is that you have to be out here falling on the sword for her you know like the mm-hmm. fact that you are having to get out in front of this and be her pr essentially i i don't think she should be putting you in that position yeah i agree um mm-hmm. that, i mean that's one of the reasons we imaginarily broke up pete you know <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I'm I'm going for these uh, Khalil Herbert uh, like tweet updates and this, yeah. this person put I think I think uh, oh wait no is the the different uh, it was Justin I Justin Herbert I thought he said uh, Khalil Herbert takes a huge leap this season I'm like maybe <laughs> maybe not maybe not <laughs> um Cuber I I it's not I, you're at you're asking all kinds of uh, Good questions. Nor- normally, everyone in the chat are just assholes. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, how often do backup running back wide receivers get traded midseason and become a big part of a new team's offense like Sony Michelle did last year? Um, I do know in the NFL, I mean, compared to you know the NBA and other leagues, I mean, the trades are just far, far less frequent. Yeah. Um, I do still think like I, I still think there's so much smoke going on with the Cleveland running back situation that even if something doesn't happen before the season, I think something could happen during the season. Like a lot of times these teams kind of maybe have leans, but then push comes to shove, someone gets injured. Same thing with like Jimmy Garoppolo, right? Like imagine a, a solid team loses their quarterback. Let's say the Rams, like let's say Stafford went down. You don't think they're going to have interest in, in a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo there to make sure this isn't like a complete, lost season so i think you probably need a an injury instigator at this point but yeah hmm. yeah is there anyone like in a um uh what's his name who's the bears uh roquan smith who's the guy hold, who's yeah. holding out is there anything anyone doing that type of thing like wanted to trade but now they're back who's just an uh, offensive player well, that was on the Browns. Cream Hunt threatened uh, yeah, a holdout and then like went back to practice two days later. It was right. like the quickest, quickest cave. Uh, yeah, but if he went to somewhere, he could be a full time back. Yeah, i Brian. I kind of have a little gamble in me. Do we do we take a bear here? I mean, even everyone in the chat talking about how. There's no updates. It's possible it's a Tampa Bay O line situation where a player was carted off, but it was for cramps and the medical facility was far away. So it was for convenience. Um, I'm kind of a gambling man here. All right. We need, we running need, back. A, we we need a running back. <laughs> and, and it's a stack. It's a stack. And the other thing is, is we might be drafting him in a very unique window of like literally two big dog drafts when there's uncertainty on it. Like if we get one report that he just left for cramps, I mean, don't you find it hard to believe like no reports on something? Like if he tore his ACL, it feels a little suspicious. Let's clackety clack. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, he's out for the year. Oh, no, wow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> It, it again there's basically zero opportunity cost at at pick 178 uh, i'm happy to uh to do it 
Hmm. You do say uh, you don't want to waste a spot on a tight end, uh, but well, that this is why now I said we had a luxury pick. The luxury pick is on the guy that's out for the season. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what, we got four RBs now. Yeah, two tight ends. Oh, we could do whatever we want basically at this point, huh? I mean, uh, Hunter and Everett's not too bad. It isn't. I would be completely fine going with two. Yeah. Um, we have three more picks left. Do you? I, I don't. I don't mind the the three QB in this tournament with Daniel Jones here at the top, and we already have two Giants. Go okay. three QB instead what, of three what, tight end. Yeah. I was gonna say, what about Ronald Jones? I I Just don't like mind. I don't mind Rojo at this fat. Yeah. Maybe all the hype's bullshit. Either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think Rojo's been falling so much, I wouldn't be surprised to see him even available at our next pick. Is this is this ADP based off of what's been going on in the big, yeah. big dog only? No, I always get tripped up on this one. I believe it's like initially ported over from BBM3 and then maybe set by hmm. big dog drafts after that. Because I do have the ADP in on the HUD too, so you could switch to the BBM3. ADP mm. compare it but um if that's sharper anyways it might not even be sharper actually if you think about it but yeah do you care I that Jones and Prescott have the same bye week yeah but which I mean we're when we tack it on as the third week not a big deal or the third do you, I, I don't hear you and maybe you do because I don't watch all your shows because it's humanly impossible <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you talk about like the QB correlation? Because like QBs and opposing QBs have like a large correlation. So oh, like you mean Prescott QB and Jones opposite. play each other twice, right? Could play each other. Yeah. Uh, no, I guess they not in best ball, but yeah, they play each other twice. So in those games, you're getting uh, correlation. Yeah. No, that's a that's a good point. I mean, I know uh, I definitely don't necessarily go out of my way to do that, just because um, it's sometimes hard to do. But I think that seems like a pretty nice cherry on top for sure. Yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's the same amount as um, uh, QB pass wide catcher, receiver, right? like wide receiver two ish. Yeah, I remember seeing that in the matrix. Thirty some percent, something like that. Yeah. I haven't looked in a while. Yeah, and I do think because we're taking a risk on Herbert and because we took the three QB, we should get to, to six RBs for sure in this build. Willis says he's uh, he's not human. <laughs> hey, you said you were late to this one, Willis. Willis is a machine. And the thing is, the, the reason Willis, you know, is a machine is he'll – you know, he might have to go to bed. He, he, I don't think he's been staying up for the, the late ship chasing streams, but he gets up, he, uh, fires up, fires up the stream, knocks it out. Yeah. Kubert talking about Herzik saying, yeah, some of these division teams playing each other twice. And it's definitely something I've thought about with the AFC West specifically, obviously playing each other twice and then just so much offensive talent there where you can tell mm -hmm. yourself a story. Whereas, you know, sometimes you look at uh, some of those other divisions that play like a slog, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think that's tough, uh, that's tough to get Mahomes Wilson on the same team though, but yeah. you can get, you can get Dak Prescott and, and jo Jones Jogo, easy. Jogo here could have done it. Rogers and fields. Like that would be easy. You could get a lot of those. Or uh, fields and uh, golf. That would be easy. Fields and golf would be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Derek, this is a fun question. Pete, who is a player you think will be in the winning week 17 lineup? Well, if you look at my exposures right now, one guy I think would be is Rashad White. Um, even got some more indications tonight of you know Rashad White playing with the starters there I guess if Brady retires or whatever maybe this all comes crashing down <laughs> with the high value touches in that offense not being so high value but 
I, I guess generically, I'd say a rookie running back, and uh, specifically, I think Rashad White could be the guy you need in Week 17. They also have an awesome playoff schedule. Will Fuller still probably uh, not um, should be drafted higher, right? Like he's probably going to sign. I think. I mean, I've still been drafting him a decent bit. Should, yeah. I say we get. I say we get our our guy Rojo. Just keep gambling the yeah. hell out of. Just gamble. Out of these so hopefully the hype is wrong. That's what uh, I've been saying. We got sniped on Pachenko anyway. So, he, uh Herbert just cramps medical facilities like four miles away. So they needed the cart and Ronald Jones <laughs> is not, being, might get released tomorrow. <laughs> might get released tomorrow. No, but it's actually, he's being shadow banned. Uh, the, he did something really mean to the reporters and they have it out for him. Okay. All yeah. right. Trey sermon with a paltry 1.8% of Pete's portfolio. I'm trying to see now looking at these running backs who I'm way under or over than Dearness our Johnson, targeting. For sure. I'm way over on Dearnest, yeah. under on Chuba, over on Deontay. I cooled on Deontay once and, Chuba started mixing and in. And these guys aren't getting drafted in 100% of drafts, right? No, especially yeah, I, in this one. I like. I mean, I know it's a, like a lottery basically at this point, but I, I love that where you can get over on guys who might not even be on teams. Like I feel like that could be a huge edge if you know what you're doing. Well, and it's it's funny you say that because so this is a guy I've started to mix in because he seems like he's the clear back to Najee Harris. Who's highlighted? Oh, you, Ebner. Oh, baby. I just don't know if we want to <laughs> hand, hand, hand it with Herbert. Anymore. Yeah. No, but <laughs> I've been doing this a, a lot now of trying to make sure I'm getting guys who aren't being drafted uh, in every draft. And yeah, so this Jalen Warren pick, I think he's the true backup now to Najee. I mean, Najee has one of the biggest workloads of anyone in the league. You know, you can wonder how much he's going to be able to hold up And the Steelers. They love to run the ball. Um, so I think uh, Warren Snell had a TD today. Uh, did it? Yeah. He's been the, the kind of the, the backup default backup, but everyone out of Pittsburgh says Warren, um, looks like the guy behind Najee. So, but just to your same thought, like I could be wrong, obviously, but I do know that he's probably getting drafted in less than, I don't know, 5% of these big dogs that that might even be high. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. What do we got? Two picks left. One pick. Oh, we're done. We're done. Okay. We're done in the chat. Also letting us know, I forgot to pull this up. Uh, when you guys mentioned it earlier, apparently Ebner, uh, hurt his ankle in the game tonight too. So even that pick uh, might have been a little sketch. I mean, you know, this is screaming Montgomery, screaming you. For it you probably it's up. probably screaming and I just no 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 I can't hear you no 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 no. I mean, I think you have to ride it out at this point. It is. I do. I like it. Probably like breaks your brain, right? Because I'm pretty smooth that exposure, and that's like zero percent Montgomery. But now it's just a bit that I have to lead into. I think. Right. Yeah. It's too yeah. late. You just got Unless he just falls to a hundred or something, you just have to yeah. take him. Yeah, that's right. That's what Brian's saying. How much? How much demon do you have, Brian? Um, not not a ton. I've only got like 28 drafts. So yeah. Guess you're not that big of a fan, are you? <laughs> I do have a decent amount of fields and Mooney. Yeah. I so let's let's recap this team here. Uh I really like this team. So Prescott Fields, Daniel Jones, really nice uh quarterback room there. Uh Saquon James Cook, Spiller, Herbert, Jones, Warren. So we have our anchor running back, two super high upside rookie running backs. And then some truly like swing for the fences picks Herbert, seeing if we can bank um, a false flag on this injury. Um, Jalen Warren as a, a guy who does not get drafted in a lot of these, a pure handcuff. And then Rojo, another guy where the news is just so bad, but what if it actually isn't? Wide receiver, CeeDee Lamb, Keenan Allen, Gabe Davis, Metcalf, Mooney, Kadarius, Tony Tolbert. Very good wide receiver room there, which is why we stopped at seven. And we thought we were headed toward a three tight end build there, but Hunter Henry yeah. and Everett, I think, are perfectly serviceable there for a two tight end build. How do you feel? I I like it. I think the third tight end mm -hmm. is like, uh, you, like I think that's the safe play. Yeah, like with this team and just like that flyer on Warren. Like it's if you're trying to win, like those who, who mentioned that someone in chat mentioned like who's going to be like 
a league winner or something. The, or, or the um, the Sony Michelle type of guys. Yeah. Like Sony Michelle was, I don't think he was taken in every draft last year, right? No. And C Pat, like stuff like that. Like your third tight end is is probably not going to make make you a uh, uh, Millie winner, but right. some random running back who gets who gets a start or gets traded. Yeah, that could change your whole the whole league. So I think I think we have enough tight on there. But like I think other than that, I don't. I like every every pick we made. I mean, and those the, quarterbacks are pretty fucking good, actually. The quarterbacks are super fun, and I like how correlated we are. Dak, Lamb, Tolbert, Fields, A. Bear, and Mooney, Daniel Jones, Barkley, and Tony. And then on top of that, we also have. Spiller, Keenan, Everett. So like four teams that were heavily concentrated on, um, I think is is really nice in this format, getting to spread big bets across, you know, four pretty interesting teams. Yep. We got the two double stacks, one stack with Jones, the Prescott Jones correlation. I mean, for a big dog, I thought we were gonna have all badges and because we were gonna have to fill it with people from the show. Yeah, and then we were just gonna get sniped. We got sniped yeah. a couple times, but not too bad. Yeah. Um, Chris, Chris says it's a great team. Thank you, Chris. Um, you did successfully bait me into pulling up your team. Was DYCR? Were you in the uh, draft here? He, he said it gave us a GG. Yeah. What team were you? Uh, so you wanted some saucing. Um, we can we can check out a couple of these teams. Uh, hey. G. Go ahead, Brian. Phil B. There with just. Just giving me absolutely no credit, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of true. <laughs> no, it, this was a team effort. This is a team effort. Um, G has uh, Burrow Tua. He got that CMC influencer 101, and uh, pretty nice uh, rounding it out there. Harris, Edmonds, Gordon Moss. I like uh, I like Edmonds a lot. Um, Higgins, Tyree Kill, Monra, Devonta, Chark, Robbie, Alec Pierce, Cobb, and Watkins. What's going on with this Cobb pick? T- talk to me, Chris. Talk to me. Why are we drafting Randall Cobb at pick 192? Darren Waller, Hayden Hurst, nice tight ends. Cobb. Hmm. Hmm. What, what? What? Remind me your username, Dr. Evil. I, oh, duh. It's Dr. Evil. Sometimes there's not yeah. uh, consistency across YouTube and underdog. Lamar, Baker. Ooh, this is a big running back room for an anchor. Eckler, Penny, Gibson, Madison, Carter, Ernest. It's probably a five running back room for me. That's just me. De- uh, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, London, Elijah Moore, Claypool, Pickens, Van Jeff, Odell, Andrews, Higby. This team feels very, very solid to me. Gibson at one twenty six. I mean, I know he kick returner now, but that's pretty pretty good. Yeah. Yep. He's pretty good in DFS last year. I mean, not too bad. Uh, D Weiss is the one hundred four. Oh. See, this is another one where D-Weiss, I never have put together. You have, so this is why D-Weiss is so confusing. So you have a different username, a different Discord name, and a different <laughs> underdog. Your, your Discord username is something else, so I can't keep you straight. Um, what did you do here with the 104? Oh, we got a true zero RB team here, or, or maybe people would quibble with that. I think it is with Brees Hall at 45. Uh, Murray, Tanny at quarterback. Brees Hall, Sanders, Henderson, Robinson, Eno, Chris Evans. I think that's a nice six. RB room. Maybe you go, I probably go seven running backs there and just rock Fryermuth into Joku, but toss in Conklin in there. That kind of goes back to the thing Brick was saying, like, what are the odds that Conklin right. kind of tilts things for you versus That's a seven example. RB? And he you don't have um what's his name? Zach Wilson either, even. Yeah. You know? Oh, um, so sorry, Joe. Joko, I didn't know you were in the chat. I'd say roast by 109, but you already did. Hey, <laughs> what if an unstacked Mahomes and Hurts early is what you need? I did see you rounded it out with some MBS and some later guys, though. GME Holder, was GME Hodler taken? Yeah, I mean, he had to have been. Um, And how do you have enough money to play best ball after holding <laughs> GME for so long? <laughs> Uh, is we had a lot you? of guys in this. Is everyone uh, watching? Everyone's watching this thing. Dude, the fuck? I don't know, the Pete. I don't know that? how you win. <laughs> everyone watching your streams. Um, Josh Allen, Trey Lance. Okay, that's fun. Now we're talking another zero RB room here. Dobbins, Pierce, 
Algiers, Demir White, Mostert, McKissick. Okay, that's fun. Well, that's Chase Debo, RB, yeah. Renfro, Rondale, Parker, Nico, Bell, Shakir, Kittle, Knox. So, ooh, that is, I love the double elite QB also stacked with their tight ends. You reached a little bit to get it done, but I like that. Yeah. Um, my only thought again is I'm probably getting to seven. I like the two seven seven twos with the kind of the zero RB stuff. Um, maybe Shakir, but I get you were with Josh Allen. You were on to want to tack on another wide receiver there. I think it's a nice team. Yeah. I like, um, I love those, uh, some of those zero RB builds. I like reaching for stacks too. I mean, I don't know if it's a hundred percent right, but that's what I do. I just force that shit in there. Well, and I, I, I do really like, I mean, specifically, you know, Kittle, I think is an elite tight end, but I think once you're outside of that tight end, I really like when possible correlating the tight end with the quarterback. Um, and you think a lot of those non-elite tight end guys, they're not going to have huge PPR days. They're not going to catch a ton of balls. And a lot of them don't have the athletic profile to rip off yards after the catch either. So you're only hanging your hat on tight on touchdowns. And so if one of these guys week 15, 16, 17 has two TDs, you want that, that correlated with the quarterback as well for the fringe guys. So I love seeing the, uh, the quarterback tight end correlation there. Yeah. Yeah. That like three catch. 28 yard two TD game. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was a, that was a fun, uh, fun stream. I, I actually pride my schedule is probably going to be pretty crazy again this week during the week. I, I might be interested if, if you're down, maybe doing another like Saturday night draft. And I know we also talked about maybe a potential other idea for some other upcoming shows that we can, uh, we can look into as well. Yeah, this week I can't do Saturday, but we could figure something out. If you can't figure do one, out a day, we'll, we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah, um, I like this our team, so I'm assuming this 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 team's just gonna tank. You know, the ones you like the most, they the, just get slaughtered usually. That that is the it's so true too. Like with the chat, like it's it's been fodder. Like over on uh, ship chasing, you know, the chat and mainly Twitter, just absolutely hating our team. Some of our teams, I'm like, that's what I know. It's probably on to something <laughs> when everyone, it's when everyone says like great team. I'm like, Oh, we just probably drafted the same team that everyone else has already drafted. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else uh, going on in your world, Brian, obviously you guys should, if you're heading into this final stretch of best ball drafts, um, get the brick draft caddy. It's going to help you multi table, help you be able to uh, chase overlay you said it's working. What what other sites do you have it working at right now? Uh, it works on drafters and underdog for best ball and hopefully DK this week. Okay. DraftKings this week. And then um, it's also got like um, props overlays too. Like if you, if anyone bets props and uh, then hopefully we're going to add like a little DFS portion too. Uh, yeah. To it you, before the you, were, uh, you were giving me a sneak preview of some things that, uh, might make its way into the DFS overlay and uh, very, very excited about that. I think for both uh, streaming stuff and just visualizing things, it'll be very interesting. And then also just the, the actual utility for people who are hand building. Um, basically like some stuff I've tried to hack together myself uh, in mm-hmm. spreadsheets could potentially just be overlaid here for you while you hand build, which I think is is pretty exciting. Yep. Yep. Um and my website, I do uh, free uh, ownership for MMA and PGA, but they're all done this week. But next week, I'll have them up again. So if anyone wants to check that out, Sweet. Uh, I think that's all, Pete, right? Oh, yeah. uh, pod. So we'll put this down as a pod, too. If you guys haven't subbed to our pod, we'd appreciate it. Um, it's on everything, iTunes, everything. LOLs, L-O-L-Z. Oh. Apologies to the audio listeners. I think I was slacking on recapping our team as we drafted tonight. I normally try to be better for the audio bros, but uh, yeah, best ball is tough. It is. it is tough. Um, all right, guys, appreciate you hanging out. I'll be back on Monday morning for best ball breakfast with the badge bros. And yeah, like I said, I have a very crazy stretch uh, coming up here, but I do really want to squeeze in a couple extra best ball streams as we push toward the finish line hope you guys all have a wonderful saturday evening for brian for the finish prime minister i'm pete we'll see you guys next time